you know, as a teacher, I spent the last three years teaching uh, a class on Euclid's elements. So it's the school where I'm at now and the school where I was previously, instead of having a typical ninth grade geometry course where you just have some textbook that says geometry on the front and some sort of three-dimensional pyramid or something, we've just been reading Euclid's elements, um, which covers all of the same sorts of things you would get in a normal geometry class, but uh, but rather than getting them in a pre-digested form, we get them as primary text. We get we get actually Euclid's mathematical work itself to sort of tackle and try to wrestle with and understand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you're teaching at Great Hearts in uh, Fort Worth, Texas? Yes, Great Hearts uh, Lakeside. I'm teaching ninth nice. grade geometry there, as well as a, a class called Humane Letters which is a, a mixture of history and literature and poetry. It's a general humanities course. Yeah, so you're, you're really much the seven liberal arts all in one. You have the, the trivium and the quadrivium all packed in one with your career. If, if you had told me, so most of my teaching career has been teaching classical languages, Latin and Greek. If you had told me five or six years ago that I was going to be teaching uh, a class on Euclid's elements and talking about math, I, I would have thought you were joking. Me. It's, it's strange <laughs> how this has sort of played out, but uh, uh, it, 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 it fits for whatever reason, it, it works. Yeah, yeah, and so your Euclid elements model for classical math instruction that we're gonna have uh, through our beautiful teaching, it's like a several classes, I can't remember exactly how many, seven, eight or nine or something. Yeah, something like that. It, and it's, it's a class that I'm super interested in taking, but it's super intimidating to me because I don't remember a whole lot about like algebra even, you know, it's been a long time, I homeschooled my kids and, you know, I'm a grandma now and my kid, I'm in preschool mode right now, baby mode, mm -hmm. diaper changing, you know. All that. Right. So, but I'm interested in taking the class and, and I'm curious how you would be able to tell my listeners that it would be a class for somebody like me, who mm -hmm. is just interested in the idea of really understanding, I've never read Euclid's Elements. Okay, so why would it be a good class for me? Why would it be a good class for a K through five teacher? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And can we do it? <laughs> Are yeah. we going to be able to do it? <laughs> so the first thing, the first thing I would say is yes. I think I think that anybody can do this, um, and the reason is this. So the way that often mathematics is taught, and there's reasons for this. This isn't a criticism. It's just an observation. Uh, is that it's taught as sort of a series of operations, right? Like you learn about polynomials and then you learn about completing the square and you learn about uh, slope intercept and you learn all these other sorts of things and maybe the the really astute student can kind of see the way in which this is narratively connected but in general the experience is just we do this operation we practice it for a while and then we sort of shift our focus to this one and maybe practice the old stuff a little bit sprinkled in there right um but and and so that means you need to bring a lot of knowledge to this because it's just sort of these little discrete uh things sure. but when we study euclid's elements euclid's elements actually starts with the assumption that we don't know anything oh. When we, when we begin Euclid's elements, we just begin by reading what is a point? What is a line? What is a surface? What is a circle? Um, and then proceed through, through sheer reasoning from definitions and then certain uh, common notions and postulates, which are you know, self-evident uh, statements like the whole is greater than the part to try to do things like uh, prove the Pythagorean theorem. But it all proceeds from self-evident principles. Okay, so I can do this class. <laughs> yeah, and anybody who can who can read text and wrestle with it can do it because there is no need for uh, uh, prior knowledge. I mean, Euclid didn't know algebra either; it didn't exist. So, do you think that the second grade teacher would benefit from taking a class like this, and why? I think so, because I think it, it presents mathematics as, I was talking to my students about this the other day, it presents mathematics as a science. And what I mean by that, science in the classical sense, a science is an organized body of knowledge. Um, and, and understood in that way, mathematics is actually more of a science than things like biology and chemistry are, because mathematics is unchanging. A triangle having three angles that are equal to two right angles is something that doesn't seem to be changing anytime soon. It's about the closest thing to something immortal that we can encounter. Uh, and so I, I present this as a model of math instruction because what we can see from this is that mathematics can be a, sort of a systematic approach to just teaching human beings how to reason. Ah, okay. So in other words, the second grade teacher who takes this class 
can gain from an experience, her experiencing it at an adult level. Yes. The experience of how to present students how to do subtraction. Right. <laughs> Right, like, right. So As part of basically giving them the experience of this is how we teach and how we have a conversation with and a hopefully how to see a new concept is new. Yeah, yeah. All of that, and also hopefully how to see all of these discrete operations, subtraction, addition, inequalities, whatever you're doing as part of a, a coherent narrative that begins with definitions and self-evident principles. Right. And maybe you don't tell the kids those things because they're not really at the stage where they should be doing all this deductive reasoning. They should probably do some inductive reasoning. Right. That's OK for for elementary school kids. But it's good for you as the instructor to understand sort of what the narrative arc is here. I'm very excited for your classes and I'm so thankful that you're on the beautiful teaching team now. So thank you so much for doing this for us. I appreciate the opportunity. I'm looking forward to it. It should be really fun.